Hey guys, we're back uploading on this channel. It's been a long time, over a year. I'm sorry to all the viewers that loved this channel and, and got abandoned. I apologize. We are genuinely back. Um, I am going to be consistent with it. That is a promise. Um, I have a new schedule and I'm, I'm, I promise. Well, you'll just see, okay? Now, we used to do replay analysis on this channel. We're still going to be doing replay analysis of all the different ranks in Rocket League. Um, and it's going to be of my Twitch subs. So anyone who is a sub on my Twitch, which you guys can find in the description, can get the opportunity to get a replay analysis. It's not a guarantee, okay? They just get to submit their replays, and I might pick theirs, okay? It's just an extra bonus for them. Um, it's something that they didn't have before and do have now. So um, it's not, not a guarantee, like I said, which does suck, but I can't get through everyone, unfortunately. Now, I'm very, I'm very stoked. Um, I, I want to be, you know, an open book for you guys to learn from, which sounds a little bit cliche, but I genuinely mean that, okay? Um, I'm here for you guys to learn from, want to give everything I know about this game back to you guys. If there's anything that you need to hear about in the comments, please do let me know. If there's anything that I'm, you know, speaking too much about or not speaking enough on, please do, again, let me know in the comments. Be honest with me not going to get offended. Uh, it's only going to help you learn in the long run from this channel. So please, like I said, let me know in the comments. Let's get into today's replay analysis. I have a mid to high champ one uh, in twos and threes. He also says he occasionally climbs into champ two. And this is Carson. Shout out to Carson. Um, can we get a uh, shout out Carson in, in the comments, please? Uh, you've got to, got to give this guy some love. Now, he said he started playing Rocket League last spring. Okay, so very impressive that he's gotten to this rank already. This replay features my main duo partner and I versus champ one opponents. Uh, for your information, we typically don't use comms. He gave some strengths. Um, he has a decent idea on spacing, when to keep possession versus booming. That's what he describes it as. Um, he, another one of his strengths is positioning himself uh, for passes. Okay, so good things there. Two weaknesses, orc positioning leading to uncomfortable moments. I presume he means this is more defensive, uh, whether that's in you know offense when the opponents have the ball or they're making a, a clear. I count that as defensive because it's it's posturing to get the ball next or it's posturing to make a touch on the ball next. That's why I class as defensive um, and maybe in defense as well. And he says another one of his weaknesses is aggressive challenges, leaving his teammate in 1v1 or 1v2 situations. So... I, I like to hear a little bit about strengths and weaknesses from the person submitting the replay. Uh, it does help me understand what they think about themselves and what I can kind of look out for. Um, I think it's important. Let's get straight into this. This guy's name is LeJohn James or LeJuan James, if, if you can uh, pronounce it as that, I guess. Um, interesting name. I, I like it. Um, and this guy is a Dominus user. If you guys are new to the channel, first video watching, you might see the video length being 25 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer than 30 minutes. We like to go into everything. Uh, I hope it's not too deep for you guys. Now, first step, I want you to go away and learn how to flip on your kickoff at this point, okay? Whether you learn how to front flip through your kickoff um, or diagonal flip, preferably diagonal flip, it is something you need, to, you need to learn right now. So that's one of the main things that you're going to get from this video uh, that you need to work on straight away, okay? The next thing is try and simplify your flip through the kickoff. Don't just flip instantly. Maybe slightly delay it, okay? And don't, I don't mean by delaying, it, delaying the touch so you're hitting the ball after your opponent. I mean delaying the flip. Jumping, giving it, you know, a tenth of a second and then flipping, not like what you do here, where you go to the ball um, and you just instantly press double jump as fast as you can. You're not getting a solid, solid contact through the ball. You've also used the wrong flip there. You flipped to the left side. Uh, we should be front flipping in this position. We shouldn't even be in this position. Uh, I don't mean to, you know, kind of buy, go into you too much, but we need to go to one side of the ball and then diagonal flip across the ball. If we're on the right side, going to the left through the ball. If you're on the left side, going through to the right through the ball again, okay? If you're in the middle like this, you want to be front flipping, getting as solid of a contact on the ball as possible. Here we hit it too much um, to the side. It makes it very awkward for our teammate, leaves him in a tough situation here, okay? We rotate around, which is fine. I like this. If you want to do a play like this, let's say your idea is you want to let them touch the ball. Um, you, know, you have to know that you have a teammate behind you, okay? If you want to just let 
your opponent touch the ball. Make sure you're not being too greedy. You've done a fantastic play here. Don't over kind of complicate things and try and reverse and go for this ball. Have confidence that your teammate back here is in a position to go for this ball because he is. And frankly, he's in a better position than you, okay? He's facing the ball. He has more of a run-up. He has more time, okay? All those things are positives. So what you want to do or what I kind of propose you to do here is fantastic. They're awkward. They're backwards. They're going to get a poor touch. They're going to give away possession. Let them do it. Here, turn ball, come off, bump this guy because this guy is nowhere near, okay? The only threat is this guy. You need to start thinking about it like this. He has no options as teammates. He is the only threat for, for my teammate here. Um, I'm just going to bump him and let this guy, my teammate, take possession. He can boom it out, preferably not. He will take time. Uh, that's the best play in this situation. If, he, if you just bumped the opponent, your teammate will know he has time. And I know that what, what you guys are thinking, uh, well, Jack, he, you know, why, was, why would he have to bump him? Because a good player in this situation, or a player that makes a good play, I should say, in this situation, would stick around. Okay, he wouldn't just leave. This is a mistake. He should stick around and try and get these guys to give the ball away or simply try and beat them or 50 them. Okay, it's because they're both going. If he gets a 50, this guy can come in. Okay, so you have to try and go for a bump on this guy. Don't clutter the situation. Don't get in front of your teammate. All right, let's go back to your POV. Sorry, I'm messing up here. There we go. Um, okay, I don't mind this. <clears throat> a better play, again, is to simplify things. Go for the boost, right? If you're not sure where a ball is bouncing, don't try and wait for it. Now, I know that sounds stupid, but sometimes if you think this ball... Okay, this situation might be a little different because you might think this ball is bouncing just straight out off the backboard. However, you do stop, which means that you're slightly thinking it might bounce upwards like it does, okay? If you think that might happen, just go for their boost. Your opponents at this level are not going to be great in defense i'll be honest players at lower ranks are good in offense usually over defense okay most players they they will mess up just go for their boost make them more awkward this guy's on 47 boost if you can just keep him on 50 boost he'll waste about 20 of it somehow and then he'll probably waste another 10 going for a ball he doesn't need to he'll be on 10 boost if you can keep the ball in their half you'll have one player on 10 boost it's just this guy you have to worry about so go for their boost it also makes you kind of allowing to uh, to stay in offense it doesn't make you on eight boosts like it does here uh, and and you also get got a bad pass obviously not going to speak about this pass this is just a rough read of the of the bounce um yeah that's just going to come with time i don't mind you did read the bounce well you just didn't then ju double jump up to the ball and you didn't you didn't even go for this ball with a with much confidence but you did read the play well so it's a it's a good you know, reads on the bounce, I would say it's just not the, the right situation um, or right play after it. You should have just gone for the boost, in, in my opinion. Now, you, uh, you mentioned that your teammate is a duo, and I'm just going to point this out real quick um, in case he is watching. He needs to stop going for big boost pads like this because he's on 60 boost. One, you don't need that, okay? Simple as that. And two, you're just, you're just making it hard for yourself. Fantastic touch. Loop around. When you have balls that are coming off of a bounce... Uh, so you know coming off the wall and you're not quite sure where it's going to go which happens right everyone goes through that stage i'm a pro i still go through that stage okay probably shouldn't tell tell you that but i struggle to read bounces sometimes not exactly sure where it's going to bounce if that's you take a wide approach that allows you to have more time it gives you more space the only thing you need to worry about then is because you're taking a wide approach you're um you're making uh, the path to the ball a little bit slower. So you need to worry about if there's a player here that's going to just intercept the ball or a player behind you, Demerin. Those are the only two things you need to worry about in this situation if he took a wide loop. And that would allow him to read this ball better. Instead, he goes for boost uh, and almost concedes, you know, or, or at least makes the, the shot awkward for you behind him. Um, and he did this. The reason I'm pointing this out, guys, is because he also did it here at the start of the replay. He shouldn't be doing that. You have to play the ball over the boost. Now, Again, I'm just going to, before we go on to the next point, I'm going to kind of emphasize what I mean, what I mean, because I know people will comment, oh, Jack, you said play the ball over the boost. And in this situation, the guy played the ball over the boost and you said that was a mistake. Usually, if your opponents are going to be awkward from you boost starving them, then it's going to be a good play. Simple as that. As well, if it's going to be a rough bounce and your teammate is simply going to be in a better position behind you to go for the ball like he would be here if you got the boost still, and maybe even a bump then that's a better play, okay? So I just want to clear that up. Let's go on to, you know, let's let's brush past that because I know um, we're, we're like, you know, 
seven or eight minutes into the video and uh, we've gone past 30 seconds. Um, but Rock League is a deep game. It's a simple game. But you can also dive deep into it, okay? All right. Situations like this. Um, you want to pressure this ball slightly quicker. Clear isn't fantastic, but it's, it's good enough, okay? We don't have to be scared of the shot in this situation. We can just push him. Now, of course, he could side flip it over us, so we're not just going to push it full speed, but we do need to close the space down a little bit, especially here. As soon as you see this guy flip out the play, it's just him, right? He is the only play we have to worry about for the next three seconds, which is a long time in Rock League, okay? We have a teammate coming behind us. We, we're in a fantastic defensive position. Don't ruin it. And we're ruining it the longer we wait, okay? Because now he's gotten the ball into the midfield, which makes this 50 a little bit poor because it goes straight back to his teammate. Don't get me wrong. This guy's done a great play, okay? He's, he's played this situation fairly well. He's not tried to go for a 50. He's just let you touch it back. Whether that's intentional, I'm, I'm not sure, but it happened, all right? The point is you should be closing this space down sooner, getting closer to him because if you get beat, you still have a teammate behind you. As long as you force the ball off your opponent and not allowed him to stay on it, you've done well. All right, so don't let him get close. Don't let him get, get to the midfield and don't let him create a you know, better angle, okay? Don't panic here, fantastic. That's good. I'm going to suggest a play. You're champ one, you're high level at the game. You can do this play. Very easy stuff. If you think that your opponent is going to flip through a 50, so most 50s there are in this position where the ball is along the ground and both players are also on the ground, okay? They're most likely going to flip into the 50 if they think... They're going to take that 50 with your car, all right? Just like you would, and just like both you did in this situation. If one of you realized this, especially you, because the ball is rolling towards your opponent, which makes this play easier. If one of you realized this in the situation and just braked here. So for example, if this guy braked and let you go into the play using your flip, or for example, if you braked here, let him flip the ball into you, you would have a goal in this position, okay? 10 times out of 10, I promise you. This is one of the best players everyone watching can add to their game that is also the easiest. If the ball is going to go in a straight line from the 50, for example, if your opponent and you are coming out at the same angle, break. They're going to flip the ball into you. You can hit it over them. Always. It will work at every rank. It works at pro level still. Don't go for that boost. It's too risky, especially if, you know, the opponent can just simply turn on this really quickly. Don't get me wrong. He did a great, you know, job controlling this play. Uh, honestly, not bad. He kind of messed up, but he hand handed the ball off, his off to his teammate. Apologies for the uh, kind of stuttering there. And, um, you know, it's a good play. You can't go for that boost because you're just simply leaving your teammate in a 1v2. If you have 45 boost here, look. This pad here, right, 57. 69, 81, 93. We're, we're on 100 boost and we're back. Okay? So we don't need that boost. It's just not worth it. Good play from your teammate. He he is Blumpkin. If you're watching this video, man, you are just the great. You're actually not bad. Like you're playing not bad at all. Uh, like especially with ball control wise and positioning wise, you're playing fantastic. You are. You love the big boost pads, man. <laughs> I like it, kind of. I mean, you 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 know you make sure you're full on boost, but don't do it. Just don't do it. You don't need this boost. You're on 50. 50 is fantastic. 50, you can get to the ceiling. You can get to the ceiling and higher, right? Don't go for the big boost pads as much as you are. This is fine. Good rotation. Good. Take time here. Fantastic. Mm. Could have took more time. I understand we're scared, I guess, of, of this guy coming for the ball. Um... Just don't be scared. Don't boost towards this ball as much as you are. I know this is really, we're going into deep here and, and something that you might not be able to practice. But in positions like this, boosting here will, will not really help you because you're already behind the ball. So even if your opponent is going for this ball, if you just simply jump and use a little bit of boost, I'm talking, you know, 10, you're going to be behind the ball. If the, if the opponent jumps for the ball and, and takes a shot, you're still going to be blocking most of the angles and get a good 50 or get a good save, okay? So you don't need to rush for this. Because you've rushed and used boost, you've gotten in front of the ball, which makes that touch poor. Luckily in this game, sometimes we get re rewarded by bad touches. That's just how Rock League works. And this touch acts as a pass, and it also acts as momentum for us to bump this player. 
We almost had it and we almost had a goal from it, but it wasn't a fantastic play. I just want to make that clear. Um, we want to be flicking this ball quite high and out. That would be a better play that would result in more consistent results. This might be a goal sometimes, but sometimes as well, I'll give an example before I move on. We'll make a play like this where we rush this touch and this is bad now. We've rushed this touch. We've landed over here, okay, which is what is about to happen. We've landed here. This player, if he recognizes that, doesn't go through rotation like this. He goes behind the players because we've recognized a bad touch might happen in this position and we bump. This guy now turns and he scores the open net or sometimes this guy can turn because there's so much time since you've made yourself, you've gotten yourself out of the play. This guy's gotten bumped. It's just a goal. So simply don't rush touches like that. They, they can be really bad. So have a little bit more confidence that you have the space, you have the time uh, in defense because you, you really do. Okay. Good touch, good positioning. Have more confidence again. Just turn, turn, go for the ball. This guy's got a good touch. Go for the ball, all right? Sometimes. <laughs> you do need to think, is it going to be bad, for example, if a player is here? If a player is here on the other team, you don't want to go for this ball because you're both pushing up into the same position. You just let what you want to let this guy carry on his momentum and, you know, go for the ball again. However, I propose you become a little bit more of a ball chaser in this situation. Sometimes ball chasing is good, guys. Sometimes taking balls from our teammate is good. Don't be fooled. Don't listen to people who's, who, you know, say that you want to just always rotate back posts and always go behind your teammate. It's stupid. I don't want to hear it, okay? Take this ball from your teammate. You can play the situation faster. Because this guy's in your corner, you can take the ball up the wall and act on a 1v1. This guy's giving you space. You can play that 1v1 faster before this guy can, be can get back. Sometimes cutting rotation and getting in front of the ball, getting possession from yourself or from your teammates, sorry, can result in better chances. If they don't like it, then you tell them to show up. It's as simple as that. You've made the better play. So I like this. You know, we've cut rotation kind of. We've not gone back post. So a lot of players would in this position. They'd let their teammate go. They'd go back post. This is good. We've turned on the ball. And we're playing the situation ourselves. Fine touch. Play for the pass. I love it. Go for the pass. Almost. Just carry on playing for this pass, though. Don't turn back unless your teammate called that he's going solo. That's fine as well. Even then, don't turn back. Go for a bump. Your teammate has time. So don't just go to defense. Be aggressive. I want you guys to be aggressive players. We hate playing aggressive players. You know, we hate playing ball chasers, or I do at least. I don't know about you guys. We hate playing ball chasers. Play aggressive. Get in their face. Look for this pass. If Blumpkin sees this pass, it'll be fantastic because this guy gives space so much, so often at this rank. Just look for this pass down, down, you know, across the line or across the pitch, sorry, along the ground or high. Can act as, you know, both passes will work there and it'll be fantastic. If he wants to go solo, which is completely fine, I like this play, fantastic pass, then make sure we're there. Urgency, we need urgency. Make sure we're there, okay? Or go for a bump. One of those plays is better than going behind our teammate when he has possession, okay? Unless he's getting a 50, we don't need to be behind him. We can still be beside him, you know, more here. And one, we just score because it's a fantastic pass. And two, if he gets you know, challenged, we can turn. We're not over-aggressive, okay? So have some faith. Be aggressive. Get in your opponent's face. Make sure you're there for the passes. Okay, this 50, I don't recommend going for. Just a quick rule, guys. If your teammate has done a play where he's used a lot of boosts like this and he's landed far in the opponent's half, which we've landed the furthest we can here, just, just buy time, all right? Especially in the corners. Don't force balls like this. Never go for this 50 ever again, ever again. And you can really make a genuine, you know, conscious decision of doing that. Don't go for 50s in your opponent's corner if you don't have a teammate behind you, directly behind you. It's not worth it. Sometimes it will result in a goal. Sometimes it won't. And most of the time it won't. And most of the time it will result in, in you know, a, a, a bad counterattack for you. That was almost bad. Nice block. Not bad, but not great. Okay, we can just take time here. I know we want to speed the play up. And I think you might think that that could be an open net. But if you're not sure, just take time. Dribble. So I want to see more dribbles from you. Uh, I want to see a bit more aggressiveness when your teammate's going for solo players. So plays like this would have been fantastic for you to go for in that corner. Okay, you just fake challenge. This guy did a great job. Fake challenge. He then messed up by just flipping past the ball. He undid all his good work. But the idea is there. And that's more important than the execution. For sure, by the way. Start integrating that mentality in your games and you'll improve way more. The idea is way more important than the execution. Fantastic save. 
we could have closed the space down a little bit. When your opponent has, you know, one angle, they really do have one angle here, close the space down, okay? But I also don't mind that because sometimes we don't want to challenge your corners. Rock Lee's hard, I understand that. You know, I'm telling you one thing and then saying you should do the other in the next play, but it's just certain things require certain other things, you know? Players like this, where you, you are defending um, and there is one angle because the opponent's coming down the wall, just challenge, you're probably just going to get a dunk. Plays in the other half, in the corner, most of the time don't want to challenge. So corners are weird. They're safe, but can also be very risky if you play them wrong. Well done. That's good defense. Nice. Yeah, go on. Go on. Good try. So definitely work on mechanics. Because you're good at the game. You're smart. You're relatively smart, okay? You just need to work on a little bit of confidence on the ball. Mechanics, right? Training packs like air dual training packs are going to be your best friend from now on. Ceiling shot training packs, which are the same as air dual training packs. You can make them both work for both situations. Great, by the way. Just go for the boost. Don't care about the ball in this situation. Not worth it. Go for the boost. Fantastic. They'll panic. They'll just hit the ball out. They'll then panic again. They'll miss the ball. All right? Don't mind this. In plays like this, right, where the opponent is behind the ball, I, I want you to start leave, start fake challenging. I, everyone watching this video that is champ, start fake challenging. Your opponents, I swear to you, and I don't mean to offend any, anyone in this game, and especially anyone at this rank, because I'll say this about my pro-level opponents. They're so stupid. They will just 50, they'll flip the ball away. They will, they will. If you challenge like this and just leave, they will flip the ball away. Look, he's already flipping. He's already flipping. He would have done that regardless of you, you going. So in this position, if your teammate can be a little bit closer to you, which they will be in most situations in, he, in this position, and your opponents are awkward, especially the guy that's not taking the 50, which if we look here, he's just landing, okay? And he's also going for the boost. They will flip the ball to your teammate most of the time for a free shot. So start fake challenging. If they don't do that, you'll just put yourself in better positions and you'll avoid getting sucked into the play, which is what we did a little bit there. Our play stopped and our attack stopped because we allowed them to take 50. 50s are good for defense. They're better for defense than they are for offense because they're good for possession. So you can, you can use your opponent, even if you're on low boost, like this guy was. Actually, sorry, he wasn't. That's a mistake. But even if he was on low boost here, if he was on 10 boost, he could have done this play. Zero boost, he couldn't. He didn't use boost. Look, he's on 65. He could use no boost and still do this play, which clearly means it's better for defense when we're on low boost uh, you know, positions than it is for offense. So don't get sucked into players. Fake challenge. If you're in defense, then look for 50s because that's, no, that's when we know we need to use them. Yeah, we do, we do need to pay attention to the demo here. It's a common play that our opponent will come behind us in this position. So speeding up a little bit more. Although I think you did a fine enough job, sometimes we just get demoed. Um, to be honest, I don't think you could have sped up much more than you did there. So that's fine. Okay. Start looking for pads. Okay. The ball, look, take a 50, the ball is bouncing up, okay? We might not know it instantly, but we do know now. The ball is in the air. You ha that means you have a brief period of time. So I need you guys to start looking out for these moments in time. And you'll notice these, start, you'll start to notice these quicker as soon as you pay attention to them. There'll be moments in time when you know you don't have to go for the ball in the next two seconds. Those are the time to be circling pads, okay? Circle to this pad. Our opponent should have got, gone through it and gotten it, but he didn't, okay? Go through this pad, this pad, this pad. We've just gotten 36 boost, and this guy's... Probably the ball is about there now. In fact, we don't have to turn back like I showed you. We just turn forward into this pad uh, and maybe even get in this boost, and all of our pad work would be undone, but it means we're here because of that pad work. If we're not there, or if our opponent gets that mid boost, which he does, um, or should, then we'd be on, you know, 100 boost regardless, okay? So focus on pads when... Did I just hear someone jump? Oh, okay. We heard him flip. My bad. I thought our teammate jumped for this ball. I was going to have a, have a heart attack. But yeah, focus on pads when we know that, you know, we don't need to go for the ball in the next situation. Fantastic. I love that, by the way. This is something that you guys can all improve in your game. Even me. Going for demos through, you know, the midfield when you're coming back from offense. Do it every time. If it doesn't, if you don't get the demo, you at least have to force them out of the posi position they want to be in. Decent. We can work on this control. So, you know, 
getting behind the ball or getting around it and, and you know, making a play with control on the top of our car is probably the best play instead of going for a 50. Again, 50s are good for possession. They're good for defense. Our opponents are playing defense here. Don't get it wrong. Even if they're in your half, they're playing defense here because you have possession. They're trying to get possession from you. He did a terrible 50 that worked so well. This, if, if a perfect player, you know, played this game, they would do this 50. But no one would ever do this 50. And that's what I mean by a terrible 50. They did not mean to double jump through that ball. But because they did, it forced it low because they're covering the top of the ball. We know how 50s work. Whatever part of the ball you don't cover, the ball will get to. This guy covered the top of the ball. It went low, okay? So it forced it back to his teammate. Fantastic. He didn't mean to, right? Um, but that shows that, you know, you can't be taking 50s, for example, all the time and just trying to win them forward like we do here. It's not always going to work. So try and get the ball into your car, get a flick. Uh, I want to see more control. We're great. We're great at challenging. We've done pretty good challenges so far. Um, you know, we're fantastic at, you know, positioning. We're just really poor at this game. I'm not saying you're bad in general. Just this game on the ball. You know, we've just conceded our first goal of the game on, you know, with an on, on the ball mistake. Okay. So just working on that control. Training packs and free play are going to be your best friends. Play some ones if you don't already. Fantastic touch. More stuff like that. It just got intercepted well, you know. It just got intercepted well. Most of the time that will work. The opponent just reacted really well. You say fair play, next play. Okay, we move on. All right. It's not terrible. Our, our teammate's still there. Good. I know we're a bit scared. I want you to start playing a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more, you know, being more willing to push forward for balls. You might lose a couple games at first when you're practicing this. But yeah, more stuff like this. Getting, getting on the ball, getting in your parents' face. Okay. Go for bumps. Go for bumps. Our, our teammate has the ball. Be more aggressive from now on. Our teammate has the ball. You've taken a play out. You've done fantastic. You've taken a player out. You've done a great touch. Taking a player out and getting possession for your team. Go for a bump. This guy is isolated completely. As soon as you see this, 10 times out of 10, bump, 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 okay? Don't go behind your teammate or... Okay, we, we did it. Nice, nice. Okay. We recognized slightly late though. So I apologize for, you know, I should have watched her play more, but instantly okay here instantly we're, we're turning ball come off we're not even looking bump okay but i like it we still went for it so i do apologize <laughs> nice 50s are your 50s are really good nice flick come on score nice touch go 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 nice let's go all right that's really good that's fantastic that's fantastic Look, we took some time. We, we actually had confidence on the ball. Fantastic 50s, by the way. You're getting really low on these 50s and getting a super solid contact through the ball. Flick, perfect. We don't try and get on target. We're just trying to get past the opponent. Something that everyone can, can learn from. Great touch. Good follow-up. It's good stuff. I love that. I love that. Okay, let's we'll see what we've done on the kickoff. Nice cheat. Nice cheat. That's good. That's what I want you to do every time. That's a safe cheat. It doesn't, you know, take you out of the play. It doesn't push you up too far. Okay. Really bad challenge. Really bad challenge. You have to be aware of just the corner in this situation. Okay. You can't let him get past you and stay on the ball. So making sure you're positioned a little bit further back in this position every time is going to be better. Worst comes to worst, he doesn't go up this wall. He tries to make a play in field. That allows you to have better vision because you're slightly further back. It allows you to get on the ball a little bit easier anyway. Okay, you can push into that position better. So stay further back in this position. Guard the wall first because this is really bad now because he's not only gotten it past you, he's stayed on the ball and it's a goal because of it, okay? So if we didn't, if we just didn't, you know, play for this position, you've got to think about defense as a team. Our teammate is covering this midfielder, or at least he should be. Where is he? Okay, he's there. Sorry, I just went all the way past him. He is covering the midfield because he's about to turn. Okay, poor turn, but he should, he would be covering the midfield like that, naturally, okay? He'd be turning like that, naturally, most of the time. He, he almost did it. So we'd be fine in this position to just cover the backboard because that's the most dangerous position here that our teammate isn't covering. That's what you've got to think about in defense, guys. What is the most dangerous position for our opponents to get to that my team is not covering right now. My team has the midfield. I don't have to cover the midfield. My team has the backboard. I don't have to cover the backboard, okay? You cover something else, right? Okay, so this time we did flip towards the kickoff. So I'm not sure why you didn't flip towards, you know, the kickoff on the first 
point, but this is a fant that's a perfect kickoff. We just missed the boost. Okay. Go forward. Go forward. Start being start being more selfish. Stop letting this guy push up into this position. Start go forward. Go forward. And I tell this guy to do it if he was you and you were here, okay? So it's just about the the position. Just go forward. You know, attack that ball. Get a little bit more aggressive, especially when you're a goal down. I don't mind just waiting at the midfield, though, because it is in the corner. But at least force something a little bit. Okay, that's fine. This gains nothing that, a, that not jumping off the wall won't do here. Okay? So don't jump off the wall when making a touch like this ever again. If you can remember that. Try not to, anyway. You know, try not to jump off the wall in a position like this when you have a free touch. If you can work on getting touches like this where you're going down the wall and getting the touch at the same time, that will control the ball. You don't just give away possession like this, okay? That allows your opponents to get onto the ball again. Um, your teammate, we have to take time here. We're on 100 boost. Stop. We need to chill out. Chill out. Everyone chill, that is watching this video, let's chill out in defense. We've just given away, you know, perfectly free ball. If you start to just try and take time on every ball, you're going to lose games in the in the short term, but you're going to improve a lot more. Oh, 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 dude. I thought that was the reason we sent this replay in. I would have hated it and loved it at the same time. I don't like people just sending replays in just to you know, get a reaction to a certain goal, but it would have been fantastic. Great stuff, by the way. That's perfect. I love this. Creativity is fantastic. Just commit and we'd be there. We'd have scored. Fantastic setup. Ceiling was perfect. I love it. I love it. Okay, better in the corner. Better in the corner. We did get pushed, like, dragged in a little bit at the end, but we didn't go instantly. Get a little bit closer. The ball isn't coming to you, mate. Like, the ball is not moving fast. This guy can't make the ball move fast because he's too far away. This guy can't make the ball fast because he's backwards, okay? No one can make this ball fast, so get here. This is the position you want to be in. If you want to let them come to you and take 50, or if they're naturally coming to you and, you know, wanting to take, take 50, let them, okay? Because you're in their corner. You don't want to commit all the way. But don't, you know, just flip into the corner or jump into the corner unnecessarily. Just get behind the ball. Let them touch it to you, all right? If you can just beat them and go up the wall with the ball, do that as well, okay? Of course, if there's possession that you guys can just take, don't just play 50s because you guys think I'm saying, like, you know, 50s are great. Take 50s. Take the possession, okay? Good search to get the boost. Let's see what we do here. Flick him. Not bad. Good try. Nice play by, by teammate. Keeps it in. Good effort. Okay. This is tough to control. I want to know what our intention was here, but I, I obviously can't tap into your brain, unfortunately, and you can't even do it in the past as well. So we're, we're going to have no idea. But this looks like we didn't commit enough for it to look like a shot. We, we, we tried to get, I think we tried to get a control touch. I don't mind it. Okay. I really don't mind it. We're going to, we're going to, you know, benefit from a lot of, uh, training packs in terms of just just water air jewels I think you're going to benefit a lot of like just get into a level where you can do stuff like this every time okay don't have to double tap it but making it super consistent making the setups really consistent okay going to the ceiling getting good good first touches where it doesn't hit the ceiling we can carry on with the ball and get a shot this is really hard to do I, I'm well aware but you know, the, the tips for this is simply, you know, make it simple. Don't overcomplicate things. Focus on getting your good first touch, you know, first, okay? The first, you know, when you go into a training pack like this, make sure the first, you know, 10 minutes of your training, block it out. Get in that first touch down. Is that first touch good? Mm, it's okay. It's too low, though. Can we get it more forward and high? Perfect, okay? That allows us to get onto this ball and get a shot off like that, all right? Then block the next 10, 10 minutes off. You know, can I get into a good position by driving on the wall? I, I'm not great at driving on the wall. Can I do it or driving up the wall? Can I do it by jumping onto the ceiling? One, this is a faster approach. It's more efficient. It uses less boost. It also gets me in a great position. Can I work on that? Okay. Stuff like that is going to improve your game drastically. You've got positioning down completely. Uh, most of the time, of course, not completely. But you're very good at it for your, for your rank. You're good at 50s. Um, be a bit more aggressive. Work on your mechanics, you know, in the air especially. Work on your flicks. I want to see way more flicks. Learn how to do this flick, okay? The reverse 45 degree flick. So playing ones is going to be your best friend. Absolutely. Playing ones is going to be your best friend. Taking more control of the ball. 
okay? Working on that ball control, getting flicks like this one, or even working on, you know, flicks like the side flip flick. It's very fast. It gets the ball off your car very quickly. It can be done at high speeds, which is fantastic. Catching opponents off guard. It gets a massive boost on speed. Um, and it's not risky because like I said, you land very quickly from it. It gets the ball off, on, off the top of your car very fast. I've landed, I can get the rebound, okay? Whereas as opposed to flicks like this, we're landing more in front of the play, which means it's more committal. We might not be able to go for rebounds. So learning different types of flicks, you know? Because I saw you flick the ball once there and it was a front flip flick, which results in a goal. It's a good flick, but you need to get the ball on top of your car more to start to take more possession. You'll only learn that through 1v1, or at least you'll learn best through that, Okay. Use training packs like the one I just showed you. Any simple water air dribble uh, is going to work. Uh, this one is coded on screen, as you can see there. You can use that. Um, and yeah, other than that, let me have a look at your weaknesses. Orc positioning leading to uncomfortable moments. Again, that was because you didn't push, push up enough, enough and needed to be more aggressive, especially in defense and allowing yourself to get closer to the opponents. Those plays, you know, when you were awkward there, it's because you just let them come to you a little bit too much, okay? So when you are in defense, especially when you have a teammate behind you or about to be behind you in the next you know, two seconds, start to push up, close that space down. Now, that doesn't mean you have to challenge, but it will put you in better defensive positions, okay? You can then fake a challenge. I you know, absolutely guarantee that'll work most of the time. You can force the ball to your corner. You can take a 50 like you were doing all game really well, okay? So you have options there. Aggressive challenges leaving my teammate in, in 1v1 or 1v2 situations. I didn't see any in that game, okay? The only thing I saw was, okay, I saw one in the corner. So we talked about the corners. You guys can rewind and watch that part again. Or we talked about, just simply, we talked about for 10 seconds why going for the boost when you were in this position here, landing off of a 50 or a touch when you were on 45 boost and you flipped for this boost pad, it's not worth it, okay? Those are the only two positions I saw you going for boost uh, in your, or sorry, leaving your teammate in 1v1 or 1v2 situations. Um, yeah, we talked about those. So being a bit more aggressive in total will help you a lot. Um, most places on the pitch, except in your offensive corners, so in your opponent's corners, okay? Please do drop a comment if you have any questions, any of you watching about anything we discussed about today. I will either look at the comments and respond to them or mention them in, you know, future videos. Please do, um, you know, help each other out as well. And don't, no one have an ego. I want this channel to, you know, no one has an ego. We're all here to learn. Myself, I learn from you guys genuinely. As a, I learned, you know, a, uh, a tip uh, from one of my people in my Twitch chat uh, to not use R2, not use drive whilst I'm in the air. It will improve my car control, they said. I learned that two and a half or three years ago. I started doing it, it improved my car control. I learn from you guys as much as you guys learn from me. So no ego. Help each other out. Don't be offended if someone tries to give you a tip as well. Um, give them a tip back. I, I love this place. I'd love for this place to be a place, you know, just to, for learning. A massive library uh, for Rock League. That's what we want to make it. So, guys, please do leave a like and subscribe on the channel. Always helps. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.